Well, Scott, we got early access to a survival horror game that can be played one to six player, and I definitely recommend on the higher player count. But yeah. this is this survival horror game where you're almost set up with Among Us like tasks where you have to find a key card and maybe while you're throughout your mission of finding this key card to find out exactly what happened on the ship uh, asteroids somehow become in the path of the ship so you have to reroute the ship's coordinates so that it doesn't destroy itself or just random little things like this like restarting the power or collecting alien sample eggs because well, in this ship, I guess the story we'll call it, there was a distress signal coming from the ship, Nemesis. And you and your crewmates, you don't really know anything about what's happening, but upon your arrival, you find out that it's been overtaken by aliens. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, what this game is all about. You creeping throughout the ship, avoiding aliens at all costs, because... Ultimately, you're not here to take down the aliens. You're here to just avoid them at all costs. Yeah, it, it kind of is a mashup of several different concepts. It, it begins off with this distress call, it, very similar to how Dead Space opens. Um, one of our mutual favorite games. Now, that's all well and good, but when you get above it, into this ship, it, what it is more like is... A sort of an alien isolation feel, but that's not exactly how it plays. It plays a little bit more like Among Us, as you, as you touched on. It's a lot of kind of running the ship. Same with Among Us. Um, you Sometimes the self-destruct activates. Curious that, but you have to scramble to try and buy yourself more time. But that's all just to kind of service the main quest. Your main quest can be a couple different objectives. There, sometimes it's find the key card. That'll progress through a number of um, events. Sometimes it's just find enough egg alien samples, and then that gives you an idea of what's going on there. Time to time to leave. But what happens in practice is a little bit more um, stumbly, to say the, to say the least. We played a lot of different um, two-player rounds, and we played solo in addition to that. But it's quite hopeless to try and maneuver this whole place in solo because the moment the aliens are aware of you, they come flying in, and it's almost just like a game of tag. They they touch you, and that's it. You're you're out. Yeah, there are basically as I've stumbled upon three types of aliens. You have the really small crawly ones that don't really hurt you but just slow you super and annoying you, and then you have these other creatures that take about a third of your health off that are maybe the size of a small dog but the thing is it's just like tag man they they hit you and then they run away and it just looks so glitchy and unsmooth it's just none of it gives you this great feel and then the last creature is this huge thing that you yeah. have to basically either throw a flashbang or use a flamethrower or a shotgun to essentially spook it and then it goes away and then it'll eventually come back and then maybe uh, your flamethrower will just stop working and you'll yeah. use it or your shotgun and it'll kill you anyway because it just one taps you and all of this is just played through very stumbly stumbly gameplay I played on the controller controls are mediocre they're not very great they're not very bad but Ultimately, it's just everything just looks janky and doesn't play like a smooth experience that I would hope. And that's why this is an early access. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully they can kind of fix it up, turn it around, because there is a lot of good concept here. The controls, I was on mouse and keys, but we curiously both had an issue with controls. In the case of yourself, there is no inverted, which is... Kind of an inside joke here, but Nate always plays inverted. It's just how it is. And there's nothing wrong with that, I think. But when you when you play on mouse and keys, I had to turn my BPI down. Or DPI, rather. I had to turn it down so that it was the least sensitive. Because this game is just cranked all the way up. And it's dizzying. I, I really tried to slow it down, so I hope in the gameplay that we're able to show it's not quite dizzying. But... Well, 
it, it was not as quick as the dizzying would suggest. It's quite a slow game as you're progressing through this dark ship. But that kind of leads me to something that was a little bit of a disappointment. And similarly to the giant alien, almost the xenomorph, it follows what you would think is more of a horror kind of blueprint, but the horror effect just wasn't there. I, I don't know if I'm just way undersensitized now at this point, but it just didn't really get me. I don't know, man. I think we have to kind of wrap this one up because ultimately my time with it, it wasn't that bad. Like We had some good laughs playing the game. Oh, yeah. But it's just in too early access of a state, in my opinion, just to recommend it to anybody, especially if there's only a, you and a couple friends that you have or if you were looking at this to play solo. So unfortunately, it's maybe a, a wait on this one until a couple more updates from my end. Yeah, I, th I think it requires a few more updates here to get to more of um, an exemplary kind of state, but <laughs> what you have is a lot of concepts mixed together, and it sounds like on paper this should work really well, but what I've found, and we've talked about this, is that it's, a, it's unfortunately not as good as the games that it kind of borrows from. Uh, all of this kind of horror, this aspect, this alien that can just one-touch you, it, it feels very much like Alien Isolation, but that game just has that locked down. I don't know if anything can measure up to Alien Isolation or Among Us, and unfortunately this just is not, is not going to beat them. But it's unfortunate. I cannot recommend it in its current state. Like I said, though, on paper, it is promising.